very honored to be hosting the Montreal premiere of Return to Homes, and I'm just going to give you a little bit of background on our connection to the filmmakers. Um, we first connected with Orwan Irabia in the beginning of 2012 when he approached us to um, participate in a, a global screening series of Syrian classics and also recent works um, in, uh, in order to mark the first uh, anniversary of the Syrian revolution and of course to um, activate a national network of uh, film festival co culture organizations in raising awareness um, about Syria and um, and also to show uh, solidarity with the Syrian people. So um, on March 16, 2012, we screened two films in H110, uh, A Flood in the Ba'at Country and Step by Step by uh, renowned Syrian director Usama Mohammed. Two years later, we've gathered here um, once again, and this time it is to mark the third anniversary of the conflict uh, and to witness the, con the continuity of, uh, of violence uh, but also uh, a powerful story of human resilience and uh, commitment to uh, resistance. Uh, this time through the intimate lens of Talal Derki, the director of the film, uh, and his collaborators. So we're hoping that Talal uh, will join us for a Skype Q&A um, after the film. I urge you to please stick around for that. Um, let's hope uh, technology doesn't uh, betray us this time. Um, and um, I also have to warn you that there are graphic images in the film, um, so uh, please be prepared for that. Um, and also, um, it's hard for me to wish uh, you to enjoy the film. I, I, I clearly can do that, but I really um, hope that it will bring you closer to uh, these remarkable individuals um, and their struggle and the struggle of the Syrian people in, um, in this ongoing conflict. So, um, right now I'd like to uh, present our guest uh, speaker tonight. Uh, this is Nezar Hamoud, and he is a Montreal activist, uh, co-founder of the Gilgamesh Cultural Society in Montreal, and a defender of human rights and social justice. So please give him a round of applause. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. To start with, I never thought that I would be stand that I will stand like this before you to view such a movie, which depicts Syria, my childhood's country, so devastated, broken, and still bleeding. In other words, a film that portrays my heart crushed by images of war, destruction, and violence. Syria the cradle of civilizations is now mourning and crying for help. It's very difficult for me to watch and discuss this movie about my Syria laying on a sickbed that might bring its death. Today, I won't comment, ex I won't comment exclusively on this, tour, on this movie because it depicts the Syrian conflict from a narrow angle, restricted to some neighborhood of Homs, my hometown. In doing so, <clears throat> the author is not aspiring to explain the multifaceted and complex conflict happening in Syria now, or at least I hope so. Anyway, I would like to thank the director, Mr. Erdiraki, for capturing the Syrian pain in a way that I and you, Montrealers, can view thousands of miles away from the bleeding wound. Cinema is a very rich and powerful language that unites people worldwide. It could be used to serve human rights and to achieve freedom and justice. Back to our main subject now, my mission today is to explain what's happening in, the in Syria in 10 minutes. So wish me luck. I know that my chances of success are very restricted. Nevertheless, I will start by mentioning the butterfly effect. We live on a planet where is everything is connected. One action, however, however small it is, can have an impact somewhere at some point of time. What's happening today in Syria, ladies and gentlemen, is the inevitable result of a long legacy of injustice, exploitation, and oppression. It's the result of a repressive political regime that could not accommodate the concept of a modern state 
and social contract. The system is stuck in the mentality of the Middle Ages where the Sultan or the ruler, the ruler or if you want, the big brother, has an absolute power over his people, deprived from their most basic rights, such as freedom and free expression. The senior society walked out glorious of a very hard battle for its independence in the 50s of the, of the past century. At that time, Syria, like other modern countries, had a parliament, powerful government institutions, unions, and election law, just to name a few assets. Here, I would like to mention that women in Syria gained the right of, to vote years before the women in Quebec. From this point, the Syrian were deprived of their rights little by little because of the consecutive military coup d'etat and foreign interventions in their internal affairs. This is how Syria entered the era of al-Assad the first. I like to, to, to call him like this, Assad the first and Assad the second. This regime has been able to dump all of these institutions from their two meanings. There is a parliament, but it's a masquerade dedicated to glorify the powerful big brother. There's an army, but instead of protecting the country, it's dedicated to protect the throne of the Sultan. There's ministries, but all they do is implementing the will of the big brother. Remember, all this is happening in a geo-strategic country that is very important politically and economically, especially in light of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Half a century passed since Al-Assad I, how was Al-Assad? had come to power in 1970. In 2000, he did something unbelievable. He gave the Syrian Arab Republic, the Syrian Arab Republic, as a heritage to his son, Bashar. Can you imagine heritage, the whole, uh, the whole republic, nothing less. This regime claims to be secular while acting in a sectarian way to keep its throne and privileges. It has drift under the influence of dark regional forces, funding the crisis because they don't want freedom and dignity for the Syrian people. In reality, they fear it, they fear it because it's dangerous. it endangers their rule and even their existence in the area. Since the first year of the revolution, the Al-Assad regime has targeted and forced to exile intellectuals, nationalists, and non-violent activists. In a way, they were vigorously marginalized. On the other hand, the regime helped and supported the rise of extremist armed forces and foreign uh, with foreign affiliations in order to give him self-legitimacy to kill and destroy everybody. The movie that we will watch today is one of hundreds of evidences on the profound, profound changes happening to the Syria, to the Syrian society. The Syrian people were forced into a civil war, fueled by their blood, but that does not serve their aspirations. In this civil war, there is no winners, but losers. The only guaranteed result is more destruction and absurd death. This is the story of Syria today. Is there any hope? I think that it's my own opinion, of course. The only hope lies in the unification of opposition, progressist forces, de gauche et de droite. United, they can avoid the sectarian trap and the foreign subordination. United, they can enforce human rights and justice for all. Finally, united, they can stop the climate of violence through direct political negotiations with concrete results on the ground, far away from the illusion of a military resolution. Is it possible? In the short run, I don't think so. In the long run, maybe. I believe in the will and strength of the Syrian people and in their ability to overcome the human catastrophe. And I still have hope. Thank you.
Thank you, my friend. I'm very happy to hear your sound. You know, too much big distance between me and you, but the art of cinema is connecting us, so I'm very glad of that. Thank you. Thank you all for your coming. So we'll, we'll pass around the mic, Talal, and uh, people will ask questions, and uh, we're really happy to see you on the big screen. So um, are there any questions? Well, maybe you can you can start by telling us how you uh, set off to make this film. Well, yeah, uh, it, it's a start all with a with a changing that it's start with a, when when the revolution came in Syria in the fifteenth of March two thousand eleven. And you know our country in the time of the dictatorships over the 40, 40 years uh, without without any moment of freedom. So it, it's about you are in the silence, uh, you are in a place that didn't allow to to appear any hero except of the president. And uh, it, so, so, so when when you, when you feel your people get all in this changing, one hundred eighty uh, percent. So uh, you you go there and you start to follow to follow the change. This this is the time when you feel that the time for the camera. So people start to shooting what happened in the street in a time that didn't allow the regime any media any channel to to tell what happened in Syria. So they are become media activists, and uh, we become one of them. We start to help those people, uh, training them for how to use small camera or handy cam or also mobile camera, how to upload it to, to the YouTube and all these things. So I was there in Homs, and I met. Uh, I was with Osama, and then I met Basit, and uh, I get admired of he of his. He was 19 years old, and. Uh, it's a start like this. A start with love. So you you feel you you feel you feel trust of somebody, and you feel that he will never give up. And uh, there is a story. You, you you follow your your sensitive. You follow you follow your, your feeling, and uh, it it will lead you to to somewhere in the end. Thank you. Yeah. So, yeah. are there any questions in the audience? Hi. Yeah, there is a. Can you hear them? Yeah. Yeah. I have a question, which is, what does freedom mean to you? What What's a freedom mean to me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, free. free it's, uh, for me. For, for me, personal or, or you mean? And for all the people, like Basset and everyone, what yes. does freedom actually mean? For me personal, it's me that you you do what you want to do. In this, you feel that your country belongs to you. You are you are one one person in your place, and you have the power to to have a sound, to have something special in in your color, in your feeling, in what you believe in. So when when you feel your sound is a power, you feel you feel that. Uh, you you feel you feel how how to explain it. You feel uh, you are there and you can do whatever you can do, and people is happy. People uh, there is no difference between person and other because this person belongs to the family or this person belongs to this group. So it's uh, it's the future for my for my son for my uh, for my country. It's. Uh, it's when you, when you, in a time when you can make a cinema as you wish, as you love, without any rules. You know, in the, when, when you know the, the changing, uh, the moving from peaceful time to the time of people start to use weapons. I was there and. Uh, 
for me personal, I put it my weapons as a camera. If if I am part of this uh, struggle, so for them, for some people who are, who, who has too much connect with his neighborhood, with his friend, with families, they they they, they, they push to use weapons and they start to to to, to learn it. Everybody there missing a time to to return as his life before. Everybody miss his his old job. His old time when all the families, all the neighbors, everybody is there and have a normal life. So, what what the the, the, the struggle is too much easy. You don't need to complicate it. It's it's a it's 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 a person, a man who try to protect their neighborhood because they they was in demonstration and the the regime killed a lot of his friends. And he don't want to, to, to give up. If you give up, me, you are out of the history. And when you are out of the history, it means all the blood that that you give, all the sacrifice is go in vain. And you you will be when you are in a small dictatorship, you will move to more uh, magnificent, more more bigger dictatorship, and you will be a prison for you for your whole life and for the time of your sons. So. What if, 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 if we give up, so it means our sons will fight again and they will kill again in the other dictatorship, in the, in the son of the dictatorship. So you should protect your place, you protect your life, protect your future without any complicated like the, the, the movement of the fanatic Muslim or uh, etc. So I, I try, I try just to focus in the humanity <laughs> through his busted face and Osama's face, busted eyes. So to just to, to know that it's it's very easy. They are normal people fighting for their dignity, for their neighborhood, for their future, for people who are who love. You know, it's uh, the, the the dangerous is the same. First of all, you 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 feel a, 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 uh, how to say a positive energy when when you see all the children and men and women and uh, shouting, singing in demonstration, and you you send this image for outside. And the people start to get bored. So okay, it's a demonstration and. Uh, People in the try to make demonstration and regime try to, to close it from here to, to support this area from this to support neighbor neighborhood. So the demonstration become more smaller and smaller because people couldn't reach the demonstration. It's the same. You you to, to be there. You, you need to, to, to pass a lot of checkpoint. And there are always snipers. Suddenly you find yourself with the. Uh, in a place that it's lose, lost all the possibility of life, and it's bombed all the time, and uh, just with a few few people in the front line, fighting, watching, waiting, and nothing happened. Just time running, and uh, the hopes and the dreams still still open. So it's uh, it's a crossing of time. This is very very very. Uh, this is very sad when when you when you are in the same place in the same film in the same corner before and after how it's look it's 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 also the the the, the movement between life and death if if you can if you can if you have the possibility to to film to film that and to be to be with your all your feeling in this in that uh, in that time and that place there that you, you will be happy. So it, uh, we didn't expect when we when we start when we start shooting this film, we didn't expect that that dramatic thing and the, all the stuff is going in this in this direction. And we try we try all the time to, to concentrate and concentrate and concentrate with a big and give passion also because sometimes you you just wait 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 and you feel okay oh, everything will stop. In any moment, and your film is, will end without without uh, get out to the people. So, 
we 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 will react. Thank you. I hope I answered your question. Okay, from the beginning, not before, not before the when it's uh, when you know Al Qaeda start to appear uh, after uh, one uh, after one and a half more than one and a half uh, year of the revolution. In the April, in the March 2013, they start to appear. So before that, they are only rebels. And uh, also, I didn't get cross other friend of Basit. So uh, I was I was since early with the shooting with the Basit, only Basit, and a few friends around him, Basit and Osama. So, so you know, in in many places like in Homs, Damascus, Daraa, that in the middle and down, it's 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 a little bit difficult for all those uh, foreign fighters that come from the from the north from Turkey to cross there. So it's it's protected by difficulty. In Homs, I didn't meet any during all the film that it's end the shoot on. Uh, in the 2013, in the, uh, in the April, at the end of April 2013, I didn't meet any of those. Last last time when I was there with the bus doing the interview, and uh, I was with him until he get cross back to homes. So I met I met some of them, but they, there's no for dramatic uh, for this this arc of of a dramatic of a drama. There is no place for those people. You ask me about if they, yeah, in my, in my new project, for sure, um, uh, I work with them. I, I, I try to find them to understand what they want, to, 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 look, to, the, to look to this angle, to look to the different... Uh, uh, I, 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 how, how to explain that uh, this dangerous is there, and uh, you should open your eyes very wide and uh, look very clear for them and to understand what exactly how the story will end what will happen later so so this is the way i was only with Bassett with a small group there are there are like Bassett a lot of people also in homes everybody take every group take uh, a part of the front line and to protect it Uh, Osama still uh, nothing appeared about him. We don't know anything. He's still in prison. Nobody saw him. Nobody tell us that he's in this place or in this prison. So uh, we feel we we feel worried uh, that he's in a dangerous or something bad happened to him. As you know, there are a lot. Of the news about what happened to the people in the prison, uh, how they are dying from hunger. And for for Basit, he's still still in homes. Uh, he lost all of his group that he returned back with him. And uh, the UN start to to help to to, to send some uh, food and uh, what uh, some medicine for the people inside the siege. A civilian, a lot of civilian now they are out of the siege. Bassett and uh, other fighters, they are still there. They they, they want to, to protect this area. They don't want to give it to the regime because they are worried if they give it to, to the regime that it uh, it will be part of the how to say it spill the country. So. They, they don't want, they want to, to end the Basset want to die in homes, so he become after he lost four of his brothers in this war, so he believed that he should stay there. He didn't have anything to do outside of homes. Uh, you know when the, when 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 NATO helped uh, the rebels in uh, in uh, in Libya against Gaddafi, it was a time that Gaddafi going uh, to take his all air force and all his power to destroy uh, Benghazi, the town where are the rebels there. Without some time, without help of people who who belong to the 
to culture, belief, and freedom or changing or understand what the meaning of the dictatorship and how dictatorship works. And without, without, without support, without having friends somewhere, you, you, you maybe you may get, get, get killed. So what do you, you prefer, to get killed or to get support? So they, they was believed they, they were believed that uh, there are some people in Europe in, in America that they understand that we are brothers and we fight for the dignity for freedom for for better life and they they should support us they support other people and why they don't want to support us they didn't find the question till now they watch everybody killed and uh, by by what uh, by the images that uh, the media activate is uploaded, so nothing, not, not, nothing high. Everything is clear. People killed, towns destroyed, women's children killed, and uh, seven million people are refugees. They are outside of their their home, their country, from twenty from twenty million and. Uh, all the world just looking and asking question: Is 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 those fanatic Muslim or not? Is this child is a Muslim? Should we support his life? We support his future or not? So they they, they try to ask these people to help, but now they are they know that nobody will uh, nobody will help. Nothing will help. They try to do it with themselves. The, the image, you know, when they ask for help, the only Al Qaeda come to help our people. So it's a little bit funny. <laughs> Not funny. It's a little, it's a miserable. But uh, this is this is the image like right now. We uh, the rebels fight uh, the regime and fight Al Qaeda at the same time. So. God, God help us. Uh, you know, you know, when in the time of in a peaceful time, uh, the, the regime put a checkpoint every place, and he tried because he had uh, all this intelligent uh, police and uh, and uh, how we call Mahabharat, and start to, to follow all the phone calls and everything, all the things due in the internet, and he arrested all those leaders of the, uh, how to say, of the demonstration. So it become a little bit difficult to reach the area where, where there is a demonstration. For example, in Homs, there was 150 demonstrations at the same time because they couldn't be together all and make one demonstration. Every demonstration, 500, 1,000. At other country, other other cities of Syria, it become possible to make to make demonstration there because the regime take all the squares. They make like small group to protect demonstration, and this is a group the first idea that they want to protect this demonstration from the regime army. And day by day they become bigger, those group, and a lot of civilian, a lot of men uh, join them. And uh, in the time when people start, when the, when the regime start to bomb cities with, a, with a, for example, in, in, a, in, a, in Homs, after, after Khadija massacre, it's become armed because it wasn't any possibility to protect yourself. All the civilian, a lot of civilian, 80 percent left the country, left the town. So the way of you can fight become more easy. It's a, it's a little bit compli complicated because I I was shooting, I work in this in the project since this project since 2011, and I still maybe one and a half more year. It's called, right now I have this title, When the War Begins. It means uh, in the time of war, I try, I try to fix how, how, how the world is ugly. There's no characters, it's just stories. Uh, how, what, what kind of creation born in the time of war, like Al-Qaeda and, uh, and, uh, and Islamic, and uh, what happened to the moderate, how the moderate fighter will will end, and 
it's it's a dialogue between a person like me and uh, and uh, how to say it, uh, Salafist jihadist who want to stay in Syria and want to make his empire or Khilafah or etc. What I, I, it, it's about my my small flat. I have a flat in Damascus and. Uh, I, we, me and my wife, and my, we miss this flat and we want to return to live there. And it's, a, it's a question when you, when you want to return home, what, what you need to do. So I try to answer this question during the film. Right now, I, I don't want to stay all my life outside. So I don't want also what happened in, when the revolution or in Iran is when and the Khomeini put all the communists and different partner of the revolution in the prison. I don't want this scenario to, to become in my country. I don't want my country to be Afghanistan. I want I don't want to be or Somalia. I want I want a good future for my country. So I try to, to ask a question that it's help us to end this war between each other and between the West and so it's like this. I don't know if, it, <laughs> if, if it will end with the documentaries, it will be great. <laughs> so, we are optimistic. We try to be optimistic, crazy optimistic. Uh, we don't know when, when it's end. Maybe you, you should ask uh, other, like Botin, about uh, when, he w when he will finish support this regime with all kinds of weapons. So somebody should ask him when he, when he feels fed up, when he feels it's enough. This regime has everything to kill his people. So when 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 the, the people of uh, of knowledge people of mind start to fall start to force those uh, Assad regime and uh, start to put to put him in a place that he should to uh, to go to politic uh, solution so there's no no answer from my part, there is no answer. Uh, I don't know exactly because all the time we said, okay, this year we we give hope for people. Now it's become better. We we have possibility. I think the the, the military the military solution will never end. It should do, it should stop from all the parts. Thank you. Thank you, Dalal. Do you have any closing remarks to make? Maybe a few thoughts to share with everyone here. There's a very diverse audience. I am sure there's a lot of Syrians in the audience as well. Uh, I'm, ha I'm happy for all, everybody who can uh, be with us to, to hear our story. A lot of people didn't know, didn't know many many information, many feeling about who are who are Syrian people, and I'm very happy that uh, maybe for a lot of you this will be the first Syrian film. And I'm happy that it will be with the, with this movement, with this changing that come across our, our people, our characters. So hope hope you hope you will still you will remember our country. Remember that there were some people somewhere. Is Basit? His name is Basit, and uh, he was he 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 fight with a big uh, with the dignity with a. With a, with a with a believing that uh, he can he can change something that maybe maybe if somebody found a good story somebody found a sad story so they are a fighter who look who lost all the all the battles against the regime but for me maybe for you also they are a hero they are a winner hope hope one day that we can give a more more story. One day will give story from uh, from my country that it will be more optimistic. Thank you for your coming. Thank you all.